Hi everybody. So I've got a couple different ways of making a two-point arch, and that is a two-pick arch in Revit and Vasari, and I just want to show you a couple different ways to make them. Uh, what I've got here is uh, they're all two-pick families, so I can take one out here from my project browser, and I can go pick, pick, and I've got a form, and here's another one. This is a uh, a parabolic one. The first one that I placed is actually a, an arc segment. This one is uh, a parabolic one. And then this guy here is another parabolic one, really identical in the way that it makes a curve, in, in the curve that it makes, but there's just a different method in creating the family. So I just thought it might be worthwhile to show all of them. Um, if I tab into selecting the lines on each one of them, now control tabbing so now i have three lines selected i'm not selecting the family i'm selecting lines within the family should be able to create form now and you know these things are all of course linked up so that i can take my two pick family and move it around and my curve that comes from it can i mean my surface that comes from it can flex with it so let's get into this let's show how these two different uh, how these sort of three different families can work um, here they are also hosted on lines so that I can take this guy and move it around and my arcs are gonna my arches that is are gonna move with it they're all pointing straight up to they're not pointing out sort of normal to the planes of these curves they're all following gravity and we'll get into how that's happening too so let's start off with uh, the one that might be actually the simplest to understand, which is the two-point arc parabolic stick. So I'm going to edit that one, and we'll see that it is a two-point adaptive component. Once that opens up, there we go. And the thing that all of these guys have in common is that they are based on a simple line that's connecting these two points, point one and point two. So point one and point two have a reference line, and on that reference line, uh, on that reference line's work plane, that is, there is a dimension, and the dimension is between point one and point two, and each one of those dimensions has a reporting parameter on it. So you can see that reporting parameter here, it's called length, and the height of the arch is a function of that length. So as the length increases, the height of that arch is always going to be a proportion of it. It's always going to be five in this case. And all of them are set right now to be uh, a fifth of whatever the length is. And I can change that and it'll move the point up and down. But the way that this one's put together, I can just show you this, putting it together sort of from scratch, or at least from that line that has the reporting parameter on it. I've done some other exercises that show adding a reporting parameter to this line, but I'll just recreate that quickly. I have my line dimension. I'm going to set the work plane of this reference line. And you just have to be careful when you pick that you're going to see down here in the status bar. You want to make sure that you're picking the adaptive points. And that'll allow you to get um, a strong reporting parameter. And there's a lot more to be said about the strong reporting parameters, but basically what it'll allow you to do is use the reporting parameter on this dimension to drive other dimensions. So I'm just going to hook that up to my length reporting parameter that I've already created. So now I've got my reporting parameter. I'm going to get a midpoint because that's where I want my line to come up from. That's where I want the middle of my arch to be, is right halfway between these two lines. So I've just hosted a point on that line. And what I can do is I can just sort of, I can change the appearance of that point. So I'm going to say change its property show reference planes from when selected to always. This is just sort of a nice thing to be able to see that points work planes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that goes straight up from it. Now, if I set the work plane there of that guy, and I draw my line up from it, I usually don't do this kind of thing because this thing is inherently not very stable. This thing could twist and turn around. If these points are hosted on funny work planes or objects, this line is going to twist and torque. But what I've done with my adaptive points, and if I select them, you can see this property of both of them, that I've changed the orientation parameter to be vertical on placement. That means that no matter what happens, these points are always going to recognize that up is uh, t 
taken from the global up within a project. That is, um, they're basically going to point up to gravity. And that, in turn, is going to percolate down to this line so that this point is always going to stably stay pointing up. So I've got my line. I'm going to pick it. I'm going to make this a permanent dimension. I just did that by picking that little glyph. So I've got my 10 feet, and I'm going to assign it to a parameter that I've already made, which is called height. And we saw before that height is a function of length, so that as I move these guys around, and come on, you're going to see that line changing distance, right? So my line here got shorter. So now I've basically got three controlled points. Two of them I'm going to use when I place it, and the third one is going to be a resultant from it. So I'm going to take my spline by points, and I'm just going to go snap. I'm going to snap to the end of this guy, and I'm going to snap to the end of this guy. Over here. Yeah, I don't care about that. And now what I've got is I have a parabolic arch. Um, I had, you know, I had a setting on here for spline by points. It was set to make surface from closed loop. I don't really care that it's a closed surface, but we'll just leave it for a second for that. So that's how the first one is made. If we go back over to here, we'll see that that is this guy right here. And you can also do some niceties with it where you can, um, you can take that line, and if you don't want it to show up, you can just turn off the parameter that says visible. You can make it so that nothing snaps to it, so it just doesn't gum up your, your snap referencing by saying it's not a reference. And that'll just sort of clean this up a little bit so that you know it doesn't show up in your project. Now I'm just going to close out of that one. I'm not going to save it. Um, now I'm just going to look at my other parabolic arch, which is this guy here. And this is the one that in the family is called... Uh, parabolic frame. It's just a different method to get to the same result. You can see when this guy opens up, I've got the same basic relationship. I've got point one and point two over here. And they have, again, that um, reporting parameter that is uh, hosted on the horizontal work plane of the line that's between the two of them. And instead of having that little stick coming up from the middle, what I've got is I've got points that if I look at, uh, if I do show host, we're going to see that this guy is hosted on the horizontal work plane of this point down here. This point in turn is, as in the other family, set to vertical on placement so that this thing will sort of have a stable sense of what is up, whether I've hosted it on a level or on a line. And then these points are drawn in such a way so that I just drop them onto the work plane of this point, and then they have an offset parameter. So if I look at that offset parameter, you can see that it's set to height, like that. And this basically has the same sort of uh, set of parameters as the other family had. I have a length, and it's driving the height. So again, I can go pick, pick, and then these guys are going to offset straight up. I have a point that's hosted on that line in the midpoint that just connects those lines. And so a three-point uh, spline by points, when you've got these two guys uh, level to each other and this guy's at the midpoint, that's always going to make a parabolic arc, uh, arch. So that's that guy. And then lastly, the one that's a little bit more uh complicated in that it relies on a nested family is this guy. So this is a, an arc segment. So if I were to investigate this one, I could see that I could always, I could pull a, um, uh, I can pull a radial dimension from it, for instance. So let's see, I haven't really tried this out, but let me just see if I can show you this. If I, you know, am I going to be able to do this? Let's do it this way. If I take this guy and I'm going to place him arc by two points, and I'm going to set this work plane to be what I'm going to place it on. Arc by two points, I'm going to go one and two. 
and I've just got my thing. I can go and align dimension and put a radial dimension on this and you'll be able to see that it's always it's going to be something that I can quantify if you want to have something that's a two-point defined arc. So this guy is, like I said, it's a little bit more investment in it. In some ways it was easier to do because I already had a certain family. So what this one relies on is a nested family, which I've posted about uh, previously. If I edit this one, what it is is this is a constrained arc by three points which is another adaptive component. So I've got a point with, that defines the center of the arc, the radius length, and the angle of that arc. And there's another post that I'm, I'll put a reference to that shows how this one's made. So this guy is loaded into the family that we were just discussing. So that's back here. Oh, wait, back one more. Come on. Where are you? So what I've got is I've got that loaded family here that's defining that, that relationship between point one and point two. If I delete it, you can see how I've built up the rig for it. So what I've got is I have a line that goes up and a line that goes down. And it relies on a little bit of algebra that is used to define the radius of an arc. And here I've just gone to mathopenreference.com, uh, which just has a little bit of math about how to calculate the radius of an arc given uh, a segment length, uh, a chord length, and the desired height of the arc. So there's a little bit of math here. Radius equals the height divided by 2 plus the width of the arc squared divided by 8h. This is just a little Google search. It's not like I have this piece of math at my fingertips. But if you find that that's what you, uh, if, if you know what you're looking for, you can just do a Google search for it. So what I've got is I know what I want my height of my arch to be. I know what my length of my arch is going to be. So I can break out the math for that. So I've got my length, which is a reporting parameter, again, like we discussed. I've got a height, which is derived from that length. And so I can take my height and my length, and I can plug it into that formula that I just got from, um, from that website. That means that I can go in here and I can draw a line on a midpoint, like we did before with our parabolic arch. But what I'm doing instead is I'm starting off by, I'm going to get my line tool, and I'm going to set my work plane to be this midpoint. And I can just I can just start off by drawing any old kind of line here. Just make sure that it... Uh, yeah, let's do that. So, I got my line. For some reason, all my generations are taking a really long time. I'm just going to stretch it out because I know that it's going to want to go down this way. So... If I set my align dimension to first, it's going to be from that point to the top of this line, which is up here. I have to tab to get to that point. That's what my height is, right? That's the height of my arch. So I'm just going to nail down that, uh, that dimension. I'm going to call that height. And it's going to pop to where it needs to be. And it looks like I got out of alignment a little bit. And I'm just going to straighten that guy back back up like that. And now I need to make this whole length, which is my radius. So I'm going to go I'm gonna tab to that point, and I'm going to tab to this point down here at the bottom. And that's going to be my radius. So if I call that radius, that guy's going to shoot down. So now I've got the radius, uh, the center point, the radius length, and the end angle for my circle. So I've got my loaded family, which is a three-point arc, three arc by center radius edge. And I can go center and radius and edge. And the proof in the pudding here is that you can see that 
the line that defines my height coincides with my arc uh, height over here. So altogether, I've got three different ways with these guys to define an arc that is defined by your start point and your end point, no matter what you're going to place them on. So I'm going to load these families up onto the website. You can download them. You can inspect them for yourself. And um, I hope that those can be useful for you. Thanks a lot and have a great day.